Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swast. Continuing on with NFL Week 4. Got a weird one here. Rams, Bears, all kinds of injuries on the Rams side. Let's get into it. Welcome to The Swast. The Swast. Hey, get the sauce. All right, like I said, Rams are on the road in Chicago for this one. This line is now three. It was sitting at one, one and a half. It's been bought up to three, indicative of some sharp action coming in on the Chicago side or a reaction to the Rams injuries, possibly. Uh, total's been bought down. We're looking at uh, 40 and a half across the board here. Let's take a look at the pie charts here. And according to this data that I don't trust, heavy action coming in on the Rams side. Over 75% of the tickets, 80% of the money on the Rams. Again, take this data with a grain of salt. So let's get into this matchup. We'll start with some head-to-head -head history. The Rams have taken three in a row. They've covered all three. So 3-0 three straight up, 3-0 against the spread in their last three matchups against the Bears. But they haven't played them since 2021. So honestly, who cares? What do we think about this particular matchup? Well, well, like I said, I mean, the lead story here with the Rams, are the injuries on offense, Cooper Cup out, Puka Nakua out, Jonah Jackson and Steve Avila out on the offensive line and Joe Note move is out and he's kind of the Rams six offensive lineman. He plays some tackle. He played some guard last year, too. He would most likely be starting at left guard uh, in place of Steve Avila. He's out as well. So the Rams really thin on that interior offensive line. <laughs> not a good look there. Um, and it's not that the Rams offense has been terrible. I mean, they've got some RA numbers. 18th in yards per play, 11th in success rate, 13th in EPA. Passing numbers look good. 14th in yards per pass attempt, 16th in success rate, 17th in EPA. Rushing numbers, 30th in yards per carry, but sixth in success rate, sixth in EPA. Obviously, the Rams coming off a huge win over the 49ers, but it's not like the offense went crazy in the game. 296 yards, 5.4 yards per pass, 3.8 yards per carry. They didn't do much offensively, which is why I'm a little worried about them coming into this matchup against the Bears defense. I mean, coming off a fluky win with all these injuries, and Chicago's been playing well on the defensive side of the ball. They're 11th in yards per play, third in success rate, fourth in EPA. Been elite against the pass, sixth, third, and third. Solid numbers against the run as well. If you look at the Bears' schedule, I mean, yeah, they lost two games in a row. It's not the defense that's costing them these games. They've only allowed 21 19 and 17 points they're only allowing 19 points per game pass rush looks good i know you look at this graphic here it only says 10th in pressure rate eighth in pass rush grade but honestly their last two games were against the texans and colts those are two pretty good pass rushes and the bears were still able to generate pressure at a 30 plus percent rate against those two teams now they're matched up against the rams and that offensive line not only is it injured as hell but they were struggling to keep stafford protected <laughs> before the injuries i mean they're 23rd in pressure rate 32nd in pass blocking grade uh 23rd in adjusted sack rate last week against san francisco matt stafford was pressured on 46.4 percent of his dropbacks that was sixth most in the nfl last week and matt stafford's actually been struggling with pressure this year i mean obviously he's aging yards per attempt look okay i mean he's still making some plays but 57.4 passer rating when pressured turnover worthy play rate 6.8 percent that's 33rd amongst qualified quarterbacks also 25th in pressure to sack rate so he's taking a lot of sacks as well don't have a ton of faith here in the rams protection in the in the rams pass protection in matt stafford bears pass rush is coming it should be able to get home and stafford against pressure is a little shaky right now especially without his receiving weapons that being said I do think it's a good spot for Kyron Williams. We really haven't seen it yet this year. 54 carries, 164 yards, just three yards per carry. But the thing is, I really don't know what I think about this Bears run defense. I mean, last year, look at the top half of this graphic. From weeks one to nine, one to 10, this was the best run defense in the NFL. But then look at the bottom half. Look at from week 11 on. The teams were running on the Bears and to start the season I mean the Titans ran all over the Bears yeah they shut down the Texans Texans couldn't get the run game going but then the Colts were running on the Bears last week in that loss so I don't know if I can count on this Bears run defense and I'm expecting the Rams to come out with a run heavy attack we just saw Jonathan Taylor have a very efficient day against the Bears 23 carries 110 yards 4.8 yards per carry I think we can expect a similar day from Kyron Williams in this game last week against San Francisco he finally got a little bit going I mean it wasn't a great game 24 carries 89 yards 3.7 yards per carry but it was a sign of life 
keep in mind when Kyron Williams, when Kyron Williams came back from injury last year, I mean, the Rams had a top five rushing attack in the NFL and we still haven't seen it missing the offensive lineman. I'm not exactly expecting the Rams to have this explosive rushing attack, but I do think they'll come out with a game plan, get Kyron Williams, the ball, run the ball in this bears front seven. And I think they will have some success with it. Now, what about on the other side? What do we think about this bears offense against the Rams defense? Um, I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's shit versus shit. Uh, the Bears offense is one of the worst in the NFL so far this year. 32nd, dead last in yards per play. 30th in success rate, 28th in EPA. Not great passing numbers and terrible rushing numbers. I mean, I guess you can point at the fact that the, the yards per play is improving. 2.8 yards per play against the Titans. 3.1 against the Texans. 4.7 against the Colts. Or was that the first time the Bears played a bad defense? Really not sure. <laughs> really don't know if we're seeing progress or we're just seeing the Bears finally play a bad defense. But I mean, that doesn't even matter because the Rams are most definitely a bad defense. They're actually one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Dead last in yards per play allowed. So the Bears offense, dead last in yards per play. The Rams defense, dead last in yards per play allowed. Something's got to give here. Like I said, shit versus shit. Uh, the Rams have been terrible against the pass, terrible against the run. Even in the win last week, they got that fluky win over San Francisco. The 49ers offense with no Debo Samuel, no Christian McCaffrey, no George Kittle. They still had 425 yards in the game, 9.3 yards per pass attempt, four yards a carry. So, I mean, even without their three superstars on offense, they still were ripping the Rams defense to shreds. And by the way, before that, the Cardinals abused them. 41 points, 489 total yards in that game. So this Rams defense is abysmal right now. I will say there is one spot of the Rams defense that they can be excited about. Their young edge rushers seem to be pretty talented. They're actually 14th in pressure rate. I mean, that guy, Kobe Turner, looks pretty good. Uh, Jared Verse, their first round pick, he's got some pressures. Um, there's another one, Byron Young, he looks pretty cool as well. So the Rams have a very young defensive front and a couple of their edge rushers do show some promise. So they are capable of gener generating a little bit of pressure. But the Bears offensive line has actually been good in that department. They're actually 15th in pressure rate allowed, 11th in pass blocking grade. They've been giving Caleb Williams time. That hasn't been Caleb Williams' problem. Problem. Last week against the Colts, he was only pressured on 23.2% of his dropbacks. That's 28th in the NFL. He was one of the least pressured quarterbacks in the league in week three. Did he take advantage of it? Um, I mean, not really. He dropped back to pass 52 times in the game. 52 dropbacks. Completed 33 passes, 363 yards, two touchdowns, two picks, and 80.8 .8 pass rating. Not going to lie, I know this is the first time we've seen Caleb Williams put up some fantasy football stats, but... That's not a good game against the Colts defense, which is terrible. Now, again, he's seeing another terrible defense, but I don't know if I trust Caleb Williams to win a game by more than three points, which is why I have to be on the Rams here. I didn't bet it yet, but if it's a full three, there's no... I know the sharp side of Chicago here. I know a lot of sharps are taking the Bears. They probably got in under three. I will not lay three points with the Bears, not with this offense right now. So it would only be Rams for me at three or more. I actually did place a bet in this game, though. I have a prop. I don't place many prop bets. Not a big prop guy. I did bet Kyra Williams over 18 and a half rush attempts. Again, I'm not huge in the prop markets, but I think it's pretty obvious if there's one thing I can hang my hat on in this game, Sean McVay's coming into this one with a run-heavy attack. I mean, they don't trust their offensive line right now, certainly not in pass protection. The Bears' pass rush is pretty good, and they're shaky against the run, or at least they've shown they might be vulnerable to the run. So I trust Sean McVay to come into this game with a run-heavy attack. So Kyron Williams, over 18 and a half rushing attacks attempts. That's the bet I have as far as picking a side. Rams plus three for me, as long as it's three or more. If you'd like to see all the bets I currently have open, head over to kylecrims.com and click on open bets. You'll see all mine as well as everyone on the staff here. Also, if you sign up to Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord, and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 on one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested, head over to the website and hang and uh, sign up. Let's have ourselves a good one. Live shows, Col uh, college football Saturday, 10 a.m. up to kickoff. NFL Sunday, 11 a.m. up to kickoff. We'll be live for two straight hours going through the whole slate or for college football as much as we can. Let's have ourselves a good one. Remember to bet responsibly. Talk to you in the Discord.